Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me today. I am Bets Golden and I'm going to be doing some etching again today on a mug. You may have remembered if you watched my um, last or a couple, I don't know how long ago was videos, I etched a Harry Potter mug for my family and I was going to do butter beer floats in them. And the company that I bought the vinyl decal from, it was this decal that I used, sent me this decal and my daughter really liked it and she's like, oh, put that on one of the mugs. And so I'm like, you know what, I can do that. So I'm going to do, I'm going to etch this today, but I'm going to amp it up and I'm going to also paint it copper. The benefit of etching a image first before painting it is your color tends to pop and it's not as transparent on glass. So that's why I'm going to do this today. The first thing I need to do is I need to lay out my vinyl piece and I can't lay it out as it is right here. Otherwise, I'm going to have to etch the entire mug just to get that image because I'm going to be getting, I'm using the, the, I'm going to be getting a negative image. So what I need to do is I need to create almost a frame for this. And I'm going to be using just an oval that I have in my stash. Um, it's an oval die cut and some vinyl, extra vinyl that I'll never use um, because it's, it's not a color that I, I foresee myself using. So I'm going to just basically get that ready first, my frame. I want to cut it down to a five by seven. So I'm just going to cut this down And it cuts really nicely. I'm just going to walk you through the entire process of this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my oval and I'm going to use this uh, blade. I have a couple different blades. This one tends to cut a little bit larger, which is what I want. And I'm going to just see what's wrong with my blade. There we go. that out. I'm going to be using that piece. This I can save for another use. And I need to put this on a transfer sheet. So I'm going to, I have a transfer sheet right here that I'm going to be using. So what you're going to do is you're going to roll out how much of a transfer sheet you need, and then you're going to place your die cut that your your vinyl piece that you're going to be laying upside down on it like so so I'm gonna have the white backing facing me and then I'm just gonna trim that out now if I was doing a multitude of these mugs right now I could totally go ahead and reuse this transfer sheet over and over again. You don't have to just throw it away with one use. It literally is just used to transfer. It also makes wonderful masking when you are stamping. If you want to do some masking on your images. All right, so I'm going to set that aside. Now I'm going to get my mug and get that ready to go. I'm going to take this, remove my backing on this, and now we're ready to transfer that image over to my mug. Okay, so to
There we go. Make sure I get that nice and it doesn't really matter that there's wrinkles in it because I only care about getting my vinyl on. I want to make sure that it's nice and adhered. So I'm just going to press that out. Now if I was laying this vinyl, this would not be acceptable by any means. There's bubbles and everything in it. So um, this is strictly just for etching. All right, so my shape's ready. Just let me make sure that around the edges it's nice and... There we go. Now I'm going to lay this image on the inside of it. And this already came with the transfer sheet ready. So it is totally ready to be laid. There we go. Now this can be the most tedious part because you really want to make sure that all your pieces are down because we're going to be etching over all of that and we don't want any of these vinyl pieces to come up. So even if they do come up as I'm pulling up my transfer sheet, it's okay. I can lay the transfer sheet right back down and rub it out until it gets adhered to the glass. I'm just going to pull it up, making sure that nothing is lifting with it and that the vinyl is staying on my glass. I found these mugs at the Dollar Tree. I really like them. I think they're awesome. I did notice that there's some discoloration on them though, but you know what? For a dollar, that's okay. Oh, see how that one started to lift? So I'm just going to lay it back down. Press it out. Oh. Now I may need to come at that from a different angle if it lifts again. All right, now we are ready to etch that image. So I'm gonna be using this etch all cream and what's so wonderful about etch all cream is you can save it. So once I am done etching, I let it sit up, I will put it right back into the bottle again and it'll be ready for the next juice. So I'm just gonna use the spoon and if you notice, some etch all cream is a different color, which is totally fine. It has to do with the environment in which you live in and your climate. I live in a really, really dry climate. So etch all tends to go brown in my climate, but that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with it or that it doesn't work. It just has, a, it's just been oxygenated, oxy, oxygenate, I can't even say it, oxenized, I don't know. I can't even talk. Sometimes I make up words, it's my gift. <laughs> So you just, it's like a sour cream consistency and you kind of want to just spread it like you are frosting a cake. It is better to be a little bit heavier handed on this than it is with not enough. And the reason is because you just want to make sure you have a really good coverage and you're going to be saving all this cream. It's We're not going to throw it away when we're done with it. When it's done etching this jar, we're going to save it. We're going to put it right back into our etch all jar and save it for next time. And I'm gonna show you how to do that as soon as this is etched. Now it's going to need to sit up for at least 15 minutes. I have had things sit longer than 15 minutes and been a-okay. It does not eat through the glass entirely. I've gone as long as two hours. I've known people that have gone longer, but I can't testify to that because I have not. So I am just laying this out. I like to do it with a spoon. Some people prefer to use the little um, etch-all tool, this little thing that comes. I use that at the end to get the cream off of my glass after it's done etching. And I'm just being careful not to go too far out on that orange. I don't want it to end up on 
Oop, and I just touched it, which you shouldn't do. <laughs> I don't wear gloves because I've been doing this so much, but my spoon's super dirty. Probably should wear gloves. I'm going to wash my hands after this. But um, I just don't want it to go in any area I don't want etched because if you do happen to get it in an area you don't want etched, like if you get it on the edge, go ahead and just take a warm, wet washcloth to that and remove it quickly. You might be okay. Otherwise, there is no turning back. It will etch it. All right. So this is going to sit up for 15 minutes and then I will show you what we are going to do after that. Also, something to keep in mind is this doesn't really drip. So you're pretty good with it um, staying right right where you apply it, which is really nice when you're working on a curved image, a curved substrate like this, that it's not going to drip on you. If this, if I didn't have the handle, I would definitely want to tape this down so it wouldn't move all over because it does tend to um, roll and that'll screw up your image. So I'm not taping this down because the handle's right there and I'm good with it. It's not going to move anywhere. All right. Uh, we'll be back in just a minute when this is ready to have the cream removed. This has been sitting for mm, probably 20 minutes or so, and I'm going to go ahead and just remove this. A note when you want to let it sit longer than 15 minutes, be careful with where you set it up because if you have a child or an animal, you know, they you don't want them to ingest this or play in it. So I always like to try to, you know, pick it up and, and get uh, only etch it for. 15 minutes, but I have gone on and done for hours, you know. So as you can see, I'm taking my extra, the cream that I laid out, and I'm just picking it up and putting it right back into the bottle to save for another use. So these little bottles will last you a long, long time. And I'm trying to get as much up as I can, not only because I want to save it, but also I just don't want to really run the risk of etching areas I don't want to as I am rinsing this off with some warm soapy water in case I don't get it all off and, and it spreads and I don't see where it spreads. I just don't want to take that risk. So I'm really trying just to get all of this etch all off as I can. And we're almost there. As you can see, it already looks a little bit more white and frosted than the other areas of the glass. So from here, I'm going to go over to my sink. I'm going to use some warm water and I'm going to carefully wash this off. Normally I wouldn't do it so carefully, but I really want to leave that image down so I can paint on top of it. I'll be right back with that process. I'm back and it removed beautifully. The image is still intact, which I was a bit concerned with because the image that I had purchased from this other company, which were my Harry Potters, lifted as I was rinsing it. So this actually stayed. I did use it. I did use kind of a timid warm instead of the super warm soapy water that may have something to do with it. I'm going to go ahead and apply my copper ink right now. This is a chalk couture. This is a couture ink. So I can use this on a multitude of surfaces surfaces for a permanent color. I am going to be pouncing it on the glass. I have discovered that this ink is um, a little bit more tricky with glass than it is with some other surfaces in that it has to be heat set, but if I heat set it right away, it tends to run in the oven because you have to heat set in the oven. So I'm gonna kind of let this set up and I'm going to be using a sponge applicator, not a paintbrush. And the reason is because I just don't like how the paintbrush is, how it looks um, when with the paint strokes. It tends to really show on the glass. So I am just going to pounce it with this sponge tip applicator. I'm going to let it dry overnight. 
and then I'm going to pop it in the oven at 275 for about two hours. But before I pop it in the oven, I will remove all of my vinyl. And I will just, once the ink is, is dry to touch basically in which I can remove the vinyl and not have to worry about it um, smearing as I bring it up, then I know that it is good to go and good to permanently set. A mistake that a lot of people make with this ink is that they don't let it dry to touch before popping it in the oven or setting it permanently with their hair dryer or something along those lines. And I have a really good coverage. I like what that looks like. I'm going to go over it one more time just to make sure, especially around the edges, just to make sure that I didn't miss any spots. And this is really, like right there, I missed that spot. This is really going to be a beautiful, vibrant copper type color. I was going to do it black and my daughter came in and she goes, oh no, do it coppery. So I'm going to do it coppery. And that's looking fairly good. Again, I am pouncing. This may leave some texture. I'm so okay with that. I just didn't want paint strokes in my brush strokes. If you want any of the supplies that I'm using, I'm going to have them listed down below. So make sure you check that out. I'm just going to list the link to the um, um, Chocotour site. And that's a really good coverage. I think, oh, I. I still have that right there that wasn't quite covered. Yeah, so that's good. I'm going to let this dry and then we'll come back and I'll show you it finished. I let it dry and set up for several hours, not quite overnight, probably three or four hours. And then I removed the vinyl pieces and let it dry overnight. Once it was dried overnight, I took my cup, laid it on its side like this in my oven, shut the oven door and turned it on to 250 degrees and I let it preheat with this in the oven and I just let it sit in there for about three hours. Then I turned off the oven, let it come completely back down to room temperature and take it out. And now it is permanently on. I can wash it, use it, whatever, and it's not coming off. So the benefit with the etch-all and using this before you paint glass is it just allows a nice opaque coverage, whereas if you don't use etch-all, you're going to get a transparent image. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share it if you did. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them down below. And if you haven't subscribed, I certainly hope you do so. Until next time, I'm Bets Golden. Happy crafting.